Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Pearls and Politics Podcast, where we are polished and poised for greatness and impact. My name is Kahala, and I'm your host. There are many things that are so East St. Louis, but few things are more East St. Louis than the East St. Louis Flyers football team. And today we have with us an icon living, none other than East St. Louis Flyers football coach, Darren Sunkit. Hello, Coach Sunkit. Hello, Kyla. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it is such a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, again, so many things say East St. Louis, but few things say East St. Louis like the Flyers, the men's football team, nationally renowned, amazing program. And you are I'm so excited because you are literally like my first icon living here <laughs> on the podcast. So I'm so happy to have you with us today and just to talk about you, your journey, and your amazing football program. Well, I'm glad to have, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> well, thank you. But before we get started, we always have to say, ask a question. Are you a member of a Greek letter organization, Coach Sunday? Yeah, I'm a member of 580 Sigma Fraternity. Yeah, <laughs> I pledged in fall 87 at Cheney State University, the oldest black HBCU in the country. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I have a special place in my heart for the men of Phi Beta Sigma. So oh. that is excellent <laughs> from my cousin Todd to my brother Corey. Just Sigmas have all the men, with the exception of my husband. <laughs> all the men in my family are men of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Oh, okay. So that's They're doing awesome. the right thing. Yes. Yes, <laughs> they are. So please tell us a little bit about your journey that led you to coaching at Eastside. Uh, I tell you, I had, as a young kid, I had no intentions of ever coaching. You know, I mean, my, my goal and aspirations was like any other athlete. You know, I thought I was going to play professional football. Uh, then, you know, it comes a time where th that whole thing climaxes and it, and, it, and it comes to an end. And, uh, you know, that had happened for me uh, right around 1991, 92. I finally figured out I, I wasn't going to make the uh, NFL. And I ended up moving from California, uh, which was my temporary home during this time, uh, here to East St. Louis in 1992. And that's when I started uh, exploring opportunities to uh, coach football. Okay. Now, where did you coach first? Uh, I got my first coaching job at Ladue High School, okay. and that that was uh, but so that was actually summer '92 when I first got here. So I was assistant coach at Ladue uh, under Coach Jerry Mayer, okay. and I uh, I'd done that for three years. Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, become a head coach in my uh, in my third year here. I was probably the youngest head coach in the area at the time, and I took over. Uh, program called Riverview Gardens. It's in North County mm -hmm. in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And I was there four years. We won a state championship, uh, two conference championships, two district titles. And then I, I made that track across the bridge to, to East St. Louis. And this, this is where I've been ever since. Okay. Well, that's amazing because you said even prior to coming on with Eastside, you had uh, state championships under your belt. Mm-hmm. Well, that's yeah. that's pretty amazing. So you said you never envisioned coaching. No, but never. here you are coaching at such a high level. So what what was it that made you finally transition into coaching? Well, I tell you, it's, it's, it's all about giving back, you know, and that, that's what it was for me. Um, just to have the opportunity to uh, to to enlighten the uh, younger generation as as my elders did me. Uh, I had some great role models in my life, uh, you know, with my uncles and, and, and my fathers and, like I say, all my, my little league coaches, high school, college coaches. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be here today without those guys. So when, when the opportunity uh, came to coach, is I, I couldn't pass it up. And I, I've, I've enjoyed every minute of it. You know, I mean, we're here. We're, we're, we're in the business to uh, – to, to enlighten, to uplift, and uh, uh, show the young men and young ladies uh, of this generation something different, give them something to aspire to. And that, that's what we set out to do each and every day. 
Well, that is amazing because I guess my next question, but you kind of hit on it just now, is what is your coaching philosophy? Well, you know, I mean, that's it. That, that's really it. Uh, to pull the next man up. You know, I mean, if you, if, if you look at my coaching staff, uh, everyone on my staff now has played for me except for two in, individuals, you know, and, you know, I, I, I think that speaks volumes. You know, they, they have uh, college degrees. They went off to college. Uh, some on football scholarships, some on academic scholarships. And, uh, you know, it, it lets you know you're doing something right. One of those guys you yelled at for four, <laughs> for four years and you was tough on them, and now they want to come work side by side with you. So, you know, any, anything I can do to, to, lift the, uh, to lift the man up, to lift the next man up and, and put him in a position to be successful. And that's my philosophy as a coach. I want to pull this young man up who's 14, 15, 16 years old and, uh, and, and show him the way of the world and, and, and let him explore and see things that he never thought he'd see. And that's one of the reasons we travel uh, out of town year in and year out. You know, our kids have had opportunities to go to California, Ohio, Atlanta, uh, Indiana. I mean, you, you name it. We're going to go to those places so we can see other things we had never seen before. Because when I grew up, I never left Jersey. You know, I never left Jersey until I went to college. And playing football has gave me the opportunity to actually explore the world. Awesome. That's really important because part of what we're doing here is we want to change the narrative of what people see um, communities of color mm -hmm. um, and not just communities of color, but particularly where I'm from, which is East St. Louis and um, Chris, our podcast producers from East St. Louis. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you've traveled, I'm sure, far more places than I have even, but you go places and people have this idea of right. what East St. Louis is. They have an idea of who the people are when it's really nothing like what we are, unless you are seeing us as champions. Exactly. As Unless you're seeing us as community builders and people wanting to lift up and in, in, in invest in children and the, the minds of young men in their lives. And so that is just amazing to hear. And that's why I wanted you to come on because I've heard so many wonderful things about you, your assistant coaches and your program, and people need to, people need to know that, right. that you and your team are so much more than just what you see on the field, which is outstanding, by the way. I mean, but <laughs> at the same time, you are so much more than, and your team is so much more than what people see on the field. So with that being said, what is your coaching philosophy? Or what do you, better yet, what, what is your expectation of your, of your, um, your players? Uh, number one, the first thing is be respectful, young men. You know, uh, in the classroom, in the community, uh, when we travel, you know, on a playing field. I mean, you got to be respectful in all areas. So, I mean, that's that's the first thing we demand because uh, you know, I was brought, I was always brought up. And it was a crazy philosophy my parents had. You can bring home all Fs as long as you got an A in citizenship. <laughs> and I, I mean, you think about that and. But, but it goes a long way because if you're a good person, good things happen for you. And uh, Absolutely. so we, we definitely, we're, we're, we're big on the respect aspect and we really push that. Uh, and like from, from there, we all know every kid doesn't want to go to college, but y'all, you want to give a kid an avenue to do something other than, or once they graduate from high school, whether it's the military or trade school, whatever it may be, we, we want to give them that, that, that opportunity. So, that's definitely the expectation. Uh, you expect them to be at practice every day. If you're at practice every day, you go to work every day. We expect them to be at school every day because if you're doing that, you're getting up in the mornings, you'll be able to get up in the morning and go to work every day and, and, and become a productive citizen. So in saying that, the biggest thing, what we expect when our kids leave our program is to become productive citizens uh, in society. So that is very important, what you said so much of what you say resonates with me, but giving them a plan mm -hmm. because so many times there's no plan for after, no matter what after it is, whether it's after a, you know, a sex, successful football, you know, career, whether it's, you know, after an unfortunate circumstance, um, Jocelyn Sandifer and I talk about mm -hmm. how she gives 
her clients and when I was doing criminal defense, giving your clients a plan. Right. And when we talked about mental health and you said you taught John Pierre, giving people a plan forward. So recognizing there's an issue, whether it's a, a great issue or, or not so great issue, but then being able to take what you know, take what has been invested in you and then use that to give somebody an additional plan. Like you said, College, I completely agree, is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. But you have to be able to still be productive in whatever that is. So whether that's entrepreneurship, whether that's, like you said, in vocational or trade school, but being able to get up, like you said, every day and be productive and be um, and contribute mm -hmm. to your community and your society. And the fact that you have that philosophy for your students and for your players is just, it's tremendous. And, and it's completely, it's a wonderful philosophy that you have. Um, and so, of course, there's that. But then, of course, there's that whole, um, I think we've all seen it. We've all heard it. The all gas, no brakes. <laughs> and we, we love to say it, don't we? We love, yeah, oh, it's, it's football season and it's all <laughs> gas. No, I mean, I've used it for my own life, coach. Mm -hmm. I would be completely honest. I'm like, okay, Chris, see, right now it's all gas, no breaks. Like that's that's what we're doing right now. And right. so what is what is your no all gas, no breaks? Like what is behind that for you? Uh, for, for us, what's behind it uh, is, is, is strange, but I mean, it is what, what, what it says. I mean, all gas, no breaks. Once we get started on the uh, – on f uh, football field between the white lines, it, it's all out, you know, and we're we're, we're not we're not going to stop <laughs> <laughs> until we have to stop. So we're going to keep the pedal on the metal. We're, we're, we're going to keep grinding. We're going to keep. Uh, it's going to be a hundred and ten percent effort on on each and every play, and and we're not going to stop to that final whistle. So all gas, no brakes. We're going to keep going until that whistle that final whistle blows, and now we'll put the brakes on. Okay. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I love it because I, um, I'm one of those people that, that likes to, to go, mm -hmm. likes to get, likes to do, likes to problem solve or come up with new things. And when I'm in, I'm all the way in. Right. And so I feel like you have to, that's how you have to be. You can't start and stop because you'll never reach the finish line. You have to give it your all and do it in excellence because so go. many people, they want to have to do something. I wasn't raised that way. So my parents, like you said, parents, my parents were like, no, we don't have to, we, you know, you need to do it. If you're going to do it, you need to do it. Mm -hmm. And so all gas, no breaks. I'm telling you, I've, I've adopted the philosophy <laughs> and we've adopted that philosophy here at Pearls and Politics podcast because I think it's an amazing it, it's amazing. it's so motivating, right? It's like, oh, gas, no brakes. Like, don't let up. Don't take your foot off their neck. Don't yeah. do, you know? Just, <laughs> just keep going. Just keep going. So, I think that is tremendous. That is tremendous. So, you've experienced high levels of success and victory um, because you mentioned your River Riverview Gardens championship. Now, how many championships do you have with Eastside? Uh, three. Three. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Three plus, we finna, let's just go ahead and speak that. So you went so, with another one. Huh? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. On our way to another one. So what would you tell people that they can apply any in anything that they do? How you were able to, what your focus was, or how you can encourage someone else to be victorious or operate in a spirit that will ultimately ultimately lead to victory? Oh man, that's 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 tough because uh, you know I, I I think the biggest thing is uh, not listening to everybody, the, the naysayers because there's always a lot of naysayers. I know when I got into it, uh, people told me I couldn't beat certain opponents, which, which just drove me uh, to actually accomplish that. Uh, you know, they said Riverview would never win. We 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 proved them wrong. Uh, at, at the time, before I t and it's crazy, before I took the head coaching job at Eastside, I contacted uh, a coach who was coaching in the conference and asked him, you know, should I move on? Should I, should I come to that side? And the first thing he told me was, ah, now East St. Louis never win again. And that right there 
told me I'm, I'm going to take this job because once again, that perception of Coach Bob Shannon's going, they had a little drought in between there and they'll never do it again. So that, that, and that, that drove me. And that's what made me say, you know what, we're, we're going to prove once again, the naysayer is wrong. And, uh, you know, like, like I tell my kids all the time, success is uncommon. And, you, you know, you hate to say it, but it's not meant, we always say it's not meant for the common man. So, you know, it's a, it's a very small path that you have to take to be, you know what I'm saying, to be successful. So you don't want to travel that path that, you know how it is, we grow up, we cut through the weeds and you got that small path that everybody takes. You want to do it the right way and really expand your horizons and, and take the most difficult path you got to take to be successful. And everyone can do that. So with that being said, you know, there are so many different paths to take. Mm-hmm. And we know that. And that they don't all lead to success, no, unfortunately. They don't. They don't. So how can we as a community, not just with players, but with students or with with each other, how can we start turning and making some of these narrow paths less narrow. Well, it's, it's a collaborative effort, honestly. You know, uh, like I said, individuals like yourself. I love that. You know, when when you came to speak, our our young ladies needed to hear that. You know, to know they can do something else other than what they're doing in, in those hallways. You know, when we when we bring anyone into a police officer, a lawyer, or anything, especially coming from East St. Louis, because a, a lot of kids, I mean, if you, if you hear their conversations, they think at 18 is, is over with. You know, I'm from East St. Louis, and this here is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I might just work. I don't know. You know, let's just say the liquor store down the street. You, you know, you got a lot of young ladies, and, and uh, that's what they're doing. But there's so many other op- opportunities. And our kids need to see the success stories coming out of the city of East St. Louis. It's inspiring. And and it's not just athletics. And mm-hmm. that's what I try to tell the kids all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I bring in people who didn't play athletics to speak to the kids because it's bigger than that. Because we're we're not going to all make it as, as athletes, as, as you see. And like you say, you, you got to have another avenue. So uh, I think the biggest thing, especially like I say, what they done bringing you in to speak and just bringing in individuals from the community and everybody doesn't have to be from the community but when they know that you grew up in the shields like they grew up or you come from the gumper homes where they come from Mm -hmm. and i made it you can make it you know there's there's no difference between me and you and uh i I think that's the biggest thing if if, if we're all working together to uh inspire the youth of our city they they can do some amazing things because there's so many diamonds in the rough and they, they just need just that spark of inspiration, to be that next success story, to be the next you, to be the next me, all right? And, you know, and so on and so on. And uh, it's there for the taking. So, uh, so I can speak to the mic. I invite all our professionals to come back and give back uh, to the children of East St. Louis. Thank you. So that is, again, Everything you're saying just speaks to me because that is absolutely something that I've journeyed to do. So whether it was before I became the first ever African-American, the first ever woman to be circuit clerk, and even in what I'm doing right now, because I want, like you said, our young women to see that. So in 2016, I was asked to be the keynote speaker for graduation. And when I tell you one of the highlights of my life that I think every person aspires to be asked to come back to their city and Mm -hmm. speak at the high school. Like, it's not just me. Like, I know it can't just be me. And so in 16, I did that. And then I was so blessed, like you just said, to be asked to come back this past May to be the keynote speaker for the ribbon pinning. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I ask, well, how do we know each other at the beginning of the episode? But Again, you're one of the first people that I don't have a, like a friendship with. And so, but I can say the first time I met you, met you. So I saw you when there was the trifecta championship win. 
Right. When the football won, basketball Basketball won state, and then track won state, right, at Sigma Plaza. Yeah. And I saw you, but I didn't speak because I'm like, well, you know, I'm not going to go speak. (laughs) I'm just going to see him and it's going to be fine Um, because I don't like to be imposing. And so, but this year I was blessed with the opportunity to actually meet you because I spoke. Exactly. And I come out and I see Rod. Mm Mm-hmm. And I've known Rod since St. Joseph. We've been friends since we were in the first grade. And so we're talking. And honestly, Coach, I didn't even, I'm so focused on Rod. Because he. when you see Rod, he sticks out. And (laughs) I had on this bright orange suit, I'm not going to lie, and this royal blue blouse, you know, I put on for my city. Mm -hmm. And so we're just, hey, classmate and everything. And there's this man standing here. And so finally, like the percent. Like my, I recognized that there was, and it was you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, this guy, you know, and I was like, he's standing right here. And I'm just running my mouth, talking to Rod. And you were just waiting on me to get done running my mouth, talk, mm-hmm. you know, talking to Rod. And it was such a great meeting because again, you're you. Like, I know you're very humble, but we put respect on people's name here and we give people their flowers when they're here Mm -hmm. and I'm just like, Oh my goodness. He just standing here and I'm just running my mouth. And so, (laughs) but we met and you were so kind. And I think so fast forward, when I asked you to come onto the podcast, that was the meeting that you were like, Oh, this is the lady that was in the orange, in the bright orange suit (laughs) that was standing there talking to Rod and she's good friends with Rod and Rod is, with me in my program. So if Rod thinks she good people that, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, that's how it and is. so again, like you said, it's the coming together of a community, you know, and you heard Rod say, well, Kyle, if I knew you were going to be speaking, I would have came down here because Rod has known me long enough to know my heart right? and my heart for people and my heart for service. And I never miss an opportunity to talk to children. So whether it's elementary, junior high, high school, that was, a blessing for the administration to say, well, Kahala. And then I wasn't the circuit clerk anymore. And they still asked, you know, I was moved on to my chief counsel position Mm -hmm. and they're just like, can you please be our speaker for the ribbon pinning? And I just pray that what I said to them motivated them, let them see, you know, that's why, you know, and you have to do what's necessary to reach our children. So, you know, I wasn't stuffy. I wasn't, you know, I wore a bright orange suit and for, you know, the little young girls, they like heels and lip Mm -hmm. gloss and all that, but whatever it takes to reach them that, you know, they can be like, Oh my goodness. Well, she got, you know what they call it? Swag, a drip, whatever these kids say, you know, Mm -hmm. and she, she's not acting like my mom or what it, cause I don't want to listen to my mom. But what I'm telling you is the same thing your mom tells you though. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but you're able to receive it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so important. And I always encourage my friends. I mean, I have best friends that are doctors and, and speech pathologists, and they do all kinds of things, and they go all kinds of places. And I think it's so important that we reach back, that we show people that, you know, I grew up on 40th and State Street, mm-hmm. down the street from what used to be Sheba's, okay? <laughs> Y'all don't know nothing about Sheba's, but, you know, <laughs> It, but we absolutely can grow up and be whatever we want to be. No doubt. And we have to show our children that we can be whatever we want to be. And I thank you for everything that you're doing because it's making such an impact and it's so dynamic. And then you do it while winning, you know what I'm saying? That you can't help but acknowledge, you know, that's why I said I'm, we were so excited to have you because we're like the coach Sunkit is coming on Merlin <laughs> Politics <laughs> podcast to tell the world, you know, and I just really feel like there's so many people that need to know exactly what you're doing, exactly what your ph- philosophy is and just how you are building you are building. And so all of those roses that grow out of that concrete can look back <laughs> one day. What do you say? So many have played for you and then you bring them back, bring them back. 
to serve with you, mm -hmm. you know, and that does say a lot about who you are and, and, and your philosophy that all gas, no brakes. Like that's, that's <laughs> what we talking about. That's what we doing. So I am so appreciative of your time today. Um, coming and imparting in us today and letting us know all that is you. And we wish you nothing but success. Oh, thank you. And we wish your team and your program nothing but success. And we just know that it's, it's, it's up from here. Oh, we can't wait. It's up from here. <laughs> we so can't wait. Thank you so much. Will you come back? Oh, definitely. Okay. Definitely, okay. Definitely, we always definitely. had that. Will you come back? Yeah. So he said he coming back, y'all. Yeah, just so. make sure you guys come out to the classes. Oh, you I know, will be there. We'll, we'll take care of you. I will be there with with my gifts. There with, you go. With, with my flyers best on, <laughs> I will be there. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be great. So tell us, when is the Classic? Uh, so the Classic is uh, Saturday night, September 3rd. Uh, we got some great teams. We actually have the two best uh, 13U Little League teams in the whole, just about the whole country. And they're from this area. We got the Centerville Tigers. And they're going to play the St. Louis Blackhawks. So it's, it's going to be a great game. Those guys are going to kick the whole thing off at 12. Uh, so you get a chance to see the future, you know, mm -hmm. the future high school kids. You get a chance to see those guys. Then we've got one of the uh, premier programs in the country, uh, IMG, out of, uh, out of Saratosa, Florida. Uh, they're coming in to play the Smet. IMG right now is ranked uh, number four team in the country. Wow. And they have some outstanding athletes. Uh, so you have the opportunity to see those guys. And then, like I said, the main game, of course, is uh, the East St. Louis Flyers uh, versus uh, CBC. Okay. Christian Brother College. Mm -hmm. And that game there starts at 6. And it's, it's going to be a great day. You know, tickets are on sale now. Uh, you can get them online. And it's probably the best way to go because there are some very long lines game day that you really don't want to wait in. So if I was you guys, uh, you could just go to our flyer page, go to my page. Uh, several people have it, has it posted, and we're going to get your tickets online, and we look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you so much. We will be in attendance. Yes, we will. So thank you so much today for tuning in to Pros and Politics Podcast, where we are polished and poised for greatness and impact. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and that you'll join us again next week. But in the meantime, please like, love, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you then. Bye.